In 1988, the Internet was in its early stages, with a limited user base of around 60,000 individuals, mainly from universities, research centers, and government institutions. The World Wide Web hadn't been created yet, emerging only the following year. Notably, the term the Internet hadn't even appeared in the New York Times until November 5, 1988, when the Morris Worm incident brought attention to the network's vulnerabilities. Former Cornell University graduate student Robert Morris was indicted today for planting a virus that infiltrated more than 6,000 computers across the country. Security measures were rudimentary, and the concept of protecting systems was more theoretical than practical. Many likened the Internet to a small, trusting town where leaving doors unlocked at night was common practice. Until a pivotal event occurred that reverberated across the digital landscape, forever altering the course of cybersecurity. It was the 2nd of November, 1988, when the Internet was thrust into chaos by the emergence of a malevolent entity known as the Morris Worm. Robert Tappan Morris, then a graduate student at Cornell University, unleashed the Morris Worm upon the fledgling Internet. Driven by curiosity and a desire to explore the developing network's vulnerabilities, Morris inadvertently set in motion a series of events that would reshape the future of cybersecurity. Morris was a computer science expert and the son of Robert Morris Sr., the chief scientist for a computer security arm of the National Security Agency. Morris had grown up around computers and was known for his skill, especially in Unix. Shortly after being accepted into Cornell, he started working on a program that could spread slowly and stealthily across the Internet. Perhaps to cover his tracks, he hacked into an MIT computer from his terminal in Ithaca, New York, to release the worm. By morning, thousands of computers around the country were clogged with copies of his program, which jumped from terminal to terminal like a particularly virulent virus. Government and university systems slowed to a crawl and emails were delayed, as the internet community and computer experts struggled to figure out how the malware worked and what could be done about it. Life in the modern world has a new anxiety these days. Just as we've become totally dependent on our computers, they're being stalked by saboteurs. Saboteurs who create computer viruses. The Defense Department, universities, and research centers are still recovering tonight from a computer virus that brought a nationwide network to a standstill. One of the institution's hardest hit was MIT. Estimates by the U.S. Government Accountability Office put the damage done by the Morris worm at somewhere between $10 million and $100 million. Crafted with precision and cunning, the Morris Worm exploited weaknesses inherent in Unix-based systems, the backbone of the Internet at the time. It targeted common programs such as SendMail and Finger, exploiting their vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access and propagate itself across interconnected computer systems. As the Morris Worm replicated itself with astonishing speed, it quickly spiraled out of control, infecting thousands of computers and wreaking havoc on the digital infrastructure. The Internet, still in its infancy, was ill-prepared for such a virulent assault. System administrators and cybersecurity experts found themselves thrust into a desperate battle to contain the worm's spread. Yet, despite their valiant efforts, the Morris Worm continued to proliferate, overwhelming networks, and causing widespread disruption. Government agencies, academic institutions, and private corporations mobilized in response to the crisis, forming a united front against the digital menace. Emergency meetings were convened, resources were marshaled, and unprecedented collaboration ensued as the world grappled with the magnitude of the threat. In a race against time, cybersecurity experts worked tirelessly to develop patches and countermeasures to neutralize the Morris Worm and restore order to the Internet. It was a monumental task fraught with challenges, yet the collective resolve of the global community remained unwavering. Amidst the chaos, it didn't take long for the FBI to figure out who was behind it. 
Robert Tappan Morris found himself thrust into the spotlight, his creation catapulting him into infamy. Morris faced legal action under the recently enacted Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986, which prohibited unauthorized entry into protected computer systems. Indicted in 1989, Morris became the first individual convicted under this legislation when a jury pronounced him guilty the following year. Due to widespread agreement that Morris lacked malicious intent and exhibited remorse, he avoided jail time. He was eventually charged with a single felony count and sentenced to three years of probation, 400 hours of community service, and a $10,000 fine. Morris never spoke to the media about the worm in the ensuing years or tried to gain fame from the event, but he did continue to work with the internet. He earned his doctorate from Harvard in 1999, became a dot-com millionaire, and is now a tenured professor at MIT. The Morris Worm served as a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities inherent in the interconnected world we inhabit. In its aftermath, cybersecurity emerged as a paramount concern, prompting governments, businesses, and individuals to reevaluate their approach to digital security. In the wake of the Morris Worm, a new era of cybersecurity was born, one characterized by heightened awareness, vigilance, and resilience in the face of evolving threats. The legacy of the Morris Worm endures as a cautionary tale, a testament to the power and peril of the digital age. Though the Morris Worm may have been contained, its impact continues to resonate, shaping the future of cybersecurity and underscoring the imperative of safeguarding the digital realm against emerging threats.